Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, if you'd like to turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 50, we'll read the, the rest of the story or, or part of it of uh, Joseph. So after that event that uh, Jay read about, uh, Joseph sent for his father and the rest of his family from the land of Canaan, and they came and lived in Egypt uh, through that famine and through the rest of Jacob, his dad's life. 17 years later, now we get to chapter 50 of Genesis, and we'll read the verses 15 through 21. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall he say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we praise thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. For now therefore, now therefore fear you not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. I also want to read uh, two verses from Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Uh, if there's one message uh, that you can learn and you could take with you from here this morning, and we, and we always learn something when we come in God's house, whether in Sunday school or here in the, in the, in the service, is that forgiveness makes us free. Forgiveness sets us free. And we'll talk briefly here this morning, maybe not that briefly, but we'll talk here this morning about uh, the forgiveness that God gives us and also the forgiveness that we should, uh, we should uh, give to others. All right, so, and maybe what happens uh, if we don't forgive. So before we get into the main part of the, I have a little quiz for us, a little trivia questions that I'd like for you guys to participate, dealing with forgiveness. I was, uh, it's surprising that there's actually a lot of uh, examples uh, in the Bible of how uh, people treated each other in regards to forgiveness. And uh, I'm gonna ask you a few questions about forgiveness and relating to these stories and well, I get your input. So in this uh, story that we read about Joseph, and uh, his brothers, remember that he was sold as a slave to Egypt when he was 17 years old. Right? So he was a young man, um, and he was sold by his brothers because they were jealous and envious, because their father loved, apparently loved Joseph more than them and treated him special, created that special robe for him, and put him in charge of you know, managing their work and so on. So they got mad and, and decided to get rid of Joseph. He ended up in Egypt where he was a, uh, a slave and in prison for 13 years by the time God uh, uh, lifted him up. And uh, we read, Brother Jay read how they came and visited and he revealed himself to them and, and forgave them. Uh, uh, so, but now let's talk about other people in the Bible. And you, I'm gonna ask the same question. So did Esau, for example, Forgive Jacob. So if you remember the story between these two brothers, uh, it looks like there's a lot of 
forgiveness looks like required in siblings. <laughs> All right, very good. So yes, Esau, very well put. Esau did forgive Jacob. Remember, uh, after Jacob stole his, the birthright, Esau was very angry, very angry at Jacob. Says, I'm going to wait till my father passes on, and then I'm going to kill, uh, kill Jacob. But now, 20 years later or so, so time had passed, quite a long time. And sometimes you know what they say, that time heals all wounds. And maybe especially dealing with forgiveness, uh, this maybe comes into play. But yes, Esau did forgive Jacob, although Jacob didn't forget about it. And you know, he thought that Esau still carried a grudge, right? He tried to pacify him with certain gifts. Very good. All right, so Esau did forgive Jacob. What about this? Did, uh, did uh, Job forgive his friends? Yes, right? Uh, Remember, Job was going through a very hard time, right? Uh, God allowed it. He suffered many things, both uh, in his possessions and also personally, right, health-wise. And, um, and uh, some friends came to comfort him, but eventually they kind of blamed him for it, saying, it's your fault that you're in this situation. You did something wrong. You must have angered God. That's why God is punishing you severely, as he is. And... Uh, and obviously, they judge with human eyes. That's why we're not asked to judge, to let God be in charge of those things. But uh, eventually, God uh, reveals himself to Job and answers his, you know, his questions or helps him understand the bigger plan. And, and then he asks Job to pray for his friends. And Job does that. He prays for his friends, right? You can't pray for somebody if you don't forget. Well, it's hard to pray for somebody if you haven't forgiven them, right? Or if you don't love them. Uh, but uh, that's what Job did. So I believe that, yes, Job did forgive his friends at the end uh, after God showed him the bigger plan. Now, did Stephen forgive those who were stoning him? Yes, right? He prayed as he was being stoned to death because he believed in Jesus as Lord laid not this sin uh, against them. So right there at the very end, when Stephen was being, his life was being taken away by these men, he did uh, forgive them. Did Saul, King Saul, forgive David? <laughs> what do you guys think? No? I say no. Even though... Uh, yeah, this is a very complicated story. They had a very complicated relationship. Like, like sometimes happens, people have a very complicated lives. And uh, Saul got, was jealous and felt threatened by David, by the younger man, the younger general. Um, even though David respected and honored him, didn't want to touch him, take away his life, even though God had, had uh, told him, you're going to be the next king. Uh, but uh, remember, Saul kept chasing him with his army, got cornered David or thought he, uh, Saul was in a cave and David was at the end of the cave, deep inside, and, and uh, David's uh, followers and friends thought, okay, God delivered Saul in your hands. Go ahead and take his life. And, Saul said, and David says, no, I cannot do that. But he did you know, take something from him and eventually uh, reveal himself to Saul. And Saul said, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, you're much better than I, you're a much better man, and he left, so he did, didn't pursue him there, but a few years later, when the situation presented to him again, he went back to chasing David. So we don't, yeah, true forgiveness forgives and doesn't go back and rehash the same things and try to bring it back. All right, did Moses forgive Aaron and Miriam? Very good, Eva. Uh, thank you for answering. Yes, uh, Moses forgave, again, sibling, uh, forgiveness within the family. It looks like a lot of these cases, and even David, uh, right, even uh, Saul and David, they were father-in-law and son-in-law, right, at that point. So uh, anyway, uh, Moses did forgive Aaron and Miriam when they came and said, you know, God can speak through us too. He doesn't just speak through you, Moses. God can use us too. Uh, maybe they were uh, felt, I don't know, frustrated or whatever happened in that situation. But 
Yeah, Moses did forgive them. Now, so I have, let me see, one, two, three, four. At least 14 or 15 stories. And so the Bible is full of stories of uh, forgiveness. Let me uh, do a couple more. Did David forgive Nabal? Nabal as the... Uh... He gave the <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah so uh, David was ready to avenge himself on this ungrateful man. Right, so David had uh, protected Nabal's possessions, watched over and helped out. You know, he was camping out, running away from Saul, camping out, and you know, the shepherds, the flocks of Nabal were out in the field, and David's men protected, says, you know, we watched over, not, nobody came in and stole your goods, so, you know, help us out a little bit, you know, give us some food. And Nabal, being a very stingy man, very uh, uh, selfish and... Uh, and foolish, we might say, uh, he says, no, who is this man? Who does he think he is to ask me for food? And he said, no. And that angered David. And he was on his way. He was on his way to basically destroy his whole household when Abigail heard about what had happened and uh, basically brought, you know, with her words, pacified and, uh, and helped David. So, now, remember, uh, Esau forgave Jacob, but long time had passed. But here we see David, short, a short time. He was wronged, uh, and uh, it got him very angry. But in a very short time, with the words that Abigail had spoken, he was able to say, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth getting even. It's not worth avenging. Uh, and he, he, uh, he said, you know, I'm not sure if he forgave, but at least he didn't pursue. He didn't pursue uh, his plan and let God take care of it. And God did take care of, of Nabal shortly thereafter. So you know, all these are examples, even for us, of how to deal with forgiveness. Because not everything is cookie cutter. Not everything is going to be the same way. There's things that are complicated, things that require wisdom and patience. Yes, God encourages us to forgive, as we'll talk briefly. But there's some wisdom that we need to apply. And we see some of these stories uh, in the Bible. Now, again, let me uh, ask a few more. Did Esther forgive Haman? <laughs> um, Esther, remember, Haman was the guy who wanted to kill. Yes, uh, sister. Um, I think there can be forgiveness, but Yeah, so it's definitely uh, it can be forgiven. But in this case, Haman, right, was a very wicked man, wanted to destroy all the Jews. Um, and uh, as you guys know, the story of Esther, right, she, they fasted, they prayed, and through her uh, presentations before the king, uh, asked him to dinner, and eventually she felt comfortable enough to tell the king what was going on in some words. And then when Haman, which was present at that dinner, finally realized what's going on as the king stepped out. He, uh, the Bible says that he fell before Esther, no doubt asking for her forgiveness, asking, you know, to, to prevent this from happening. But, um, uh, yes, yeah, so when the king came back, he sealed his fate, right? And, you know, as you mentioned, there's justice that sometimes needs to happen, even um, to prevent a greater harm, in this case, the wicked person got caught in his own trap, got brought down on him while he was planning for others. Um, obviously, in this case, Haman was not only doing something wrong to Esther personally, but to a lot of people, right? So God, in his own wisdom, knows how to deal with that. We leave it in his hand, and we see the end of that story. All right, did, uh, now let's talk about in the church. We talked about a lot of different things here, but what about in church? We know... Uh, there was a, an event that, a couple of events at least, that we can learn from. Did Paul forgive Mark and Barnabas? Remember, they had a situation. They were both serving God. They were both on zeal and in fire for the Lord. But there were some difference of opinion, disagreements. As they were uh, going out a missionary journey, uh, Mark came along. He was related to Barnabas, um, 
And, uh, but being younger, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Maybe he thought, oh, this is too hard. I'm not cut out for this missionary stuff. Uh, and he left, right? He left them part way through the journey. Now, no doubt Barnabas and Paul probably depended on Mark doing something. He wasn't there just as a spectator. You know, he had some responsibilities, and here he left them high and dry without fulfilling his responsibilities, and to the point where it got the disagreement between uh, Barnabas and Paul got so uh, heavy because Barnabas wanted to take him a second time. But Paul says, no, no, we cannot take him the first time because, you know, the first time he came with us, he left us part way. Like they tell you at interviews, when you interview people, past performance, usually a very good indicator of future performance, right? When, when I interview somebody, I ask them, you know, some of the things they've done, because somebody can just, on a dime, change and become somebody different than they were before. So you can see by their actions before, what they did before, most likely they will do similar things in the future. Yes, people can change, but it's hard to change that quickly. And uh, so Paul said no. And so they eventually separated, went different ways. But we know uh, at least five years later, when Paul wrote the epistle to 1 Corinthians, that uh, he spoke well of Barnabas. Right? You know, there are no doubt they met each other in the same church in Antioch. It doesn't, Bible doesn't tell us, but I'm, I'm thinking, no doubt they kind of rubbed shoulder with each other again uh, in that church where they were members of initially before they went on the missionary journeys. So five years later, he spoke well of Barnabas, saying how, you know, it's Barnabas and I, they are going in the field and are kind of supporting it. You know, we're not depending on support from the churches, but we kind of support ourselves. So he spoke well of Barnabas after that, so definitely respected and, uh, and had a high view of him, and also of Mark later on, 17 years later now, so time, a lot of time had passed, but by that point, Mark was useful to the ministry of Paul. So we see how Mark learned. He was young initially, maybe didn't have a lot of experience, but he was willing to learn, and he learned, and we see also Paul, who didn't keep that grudge going, but forgave, forgave uh, Mark, and even reconnected with the uh, Right, reconciled, reconnected, and they had a, a relationship in, in the Lord's service. So we thank God for all, you know, all these examples. And there's more I can ask you about the father and the prodigal son. Did Jesus forgive the Roman soldiers that crucified him? Yes. Did the church forgive Paul for him persecuting the church? Yes, the church forgave him. And, and that was a, a terrible thing that, that Paul did, but the people of God forgave him. Did Cain forgive Abel? No. Did Martha forgive Mary? Hopefully, yes, uh, when Jesus revealed to her what's more important. Did uh, Joab forgive Abner? No. We see a bad example here where Joab didn't forgive Abner, whether it was as a revenge for Abner killing his youngest brother Asahel or maybe to eliminate a potential rival. We see all these examples and wonderful stories for us we can learn because forgiveness, as I said earlier, is a key that sets us free. Each one of us need to, uh, each one of us need to have that in our lives because uh, God forgave us, right? God forgave us and we should forgive others. So um, we read about the story of Joseph and as we, as we mentioned, Joseph forgave him. And not only that, but notice here, they didn't forget. Sometimes people say, forgive and forget. But it's not always that simple with a lot of things. Yes, if small offenses, or you forget it, even forget everything. But we can see here that even at the end, 17 years later, not only did Joseph, I mean, uh, uh, remember it because he did mention, you meant it evil for me. Remember what, ha what had happened. You meant it evil, but God has turned it for good. But apparently it was also going through Jacob's mind, their dad's mind thinking that maybe once I'm away, once I'm gone, maybe Joseph will, will, will cause some harm to his brothers, and the brothers remembered. So it's not necessarily that we completely forget about what had happened, but uh, we move on past it. We forgive, and, uh, and we leave it in God's hands. Because God forgave us. And Micah 7, 18 talks about God's forgiveness. How God's forgiveness is so deep, it says that he casts our, our sins into the depth of the sea, depth of the ocean. 
Recently, there was an article about uh, the Titanic, how uh, some company out there that's, uh, I think it's the company that's in charge of, uh, has rights over, 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 uh, over that ship, over that area there. And uh, they were going back to find out more about it. And, you know, Titanic is at, talking about the depth of the sea, 12,500 feet at the bottom of the ocean, two and a half, almost two and a half miles below the surface of the, of the ocean. And uh, uh, they found, you know, it's breaking apart more and more things, you know, as time goes on, more things are breaking apart. But they found some kind of statue, you know, and I was thinking about how, inter how odd. They found the statue of, uh, you know, in the Bible when it talks about uh, in Ephesus where Paul was preaching there and it caused a change in people's lives to where they couldn't sell the idols and eventually they start cheering for Diana of Ephesus. Well, the statue that was in Titanic in one of the first class mantelpieces was a statue of Diana. Diana of Versailles, uh, goddess Aphrodite, right, from the, from the Greek, uh, no, no, not Artemis, the goddess Artemis, uh, Huntress, and so on, and family goddess. But uh, they found her right there uh, on the statue. So God doesn't dig up what he's forgiven us. He doesn't go back looking for it, right? When he casts them into the bottom of the ocean, they're gone for good, covered by the blood of the lamb. How thankful we are for that. We heard Wednesday Bible study, as far as the east from the west. That's how far away God casts our, our, removes our transgression for us. So if God forgave us, says we also need to forgive one another. Colossians 3.13 says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. So God has called us to, have a, to forgive one another as things happen in life. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that call of God to forgive each other. Now, forgiving is not always easy, and it might take some time. A story here about a person called Corrie ten Boom. She, during, uh, she was one of those ladies, a Dutch person during the World War II that she helped uh, hide away certain Jews in her, and I don't know the full story, in her home or whatever. She was hiding them. Eventually, they got found out, and she was put into jail, and even her family, and a lot of them died. But anyway, uh, later on, she, uh, she, she, uh, she tells a story how she was not able to forget a wrong that had been done to her. She had forgiven the person, but she kept rehashing, the story goes, rehashing the incident, and she couldn't sleep. Maybe you've been in that situation where you couldn't sleep for various reasons. Well, finally, she cried to God for help in putting the problem to rest. And uh, his help came in the form of a Lutheran pastor, Corey wrote, uh, to whom she confessed this problem that she had, that she couldn't sleep for two weeks because of all these things that you know, uh, kept her up because of the, this forgiveness issue. So he told her a little thing that in the church tower, uh, there's a bell that is rung by the guardian of the bell. You know, he, he rings the bell, he pulls on the rope, and he rings the bell. She says, do you know what happens? She says, after the bell custodian lets go of the rope, the bell keeps on swinging for a while. You know, you hear a ding, then another dong, slower and slower until there's a final dong and it stops. He says, I believe the same thing is true of forgiveness. When we forgive, we take our hands off the rope. But if we've been tugging at this for a while, right, if this has been an issue of some, some concern and depth to us, we may hear the ding-dongs for a while. They may be slowing down, but eventually, if we don't dwell on that and we truly have forgiven from the heart, that it will... Uh, it will be gone. And that's what happened to her a few more days. And then later on, she completely went over that and passed over that. So, so forgiveness may take some time, but, uh, but uh, God will help us if our desire is in the right place. Un un unlike this next story that I'm going to tell you about, this is a story about uh, Marie de' Medici. You might have heard them from history. They were a powerful family from Florence. Uh, she became the wife of King Henry IV in France. And eventually, after he died, she became the regent for their son until he was in adulthood. Uh, and uh, 
but uh, what had happened is uh, her relationship with her son grew worse and soured, and they lived in a state of ongoing hostility. In other words, they didn't get along. Mother and son didn't get along after a while. So uh, Marie, she felt a deep sense of betrayal. Also, when the, the bishop or the cardinal, Richelieu, whom she had helped in his rise to political power, deserted her and went over to her son's side. While on her deathbed, Marie was visited by some guy, and uh, she vowed to forgive all of her enemies, including the cardinal. So, so this guy, uh, Fabio, his name was, ask, asked her, as a sign of reconciliation, the fact that you truly mean what you say, will you send him the bracelet that you wear on your arm? Remember, she was on her deathbed, and she said, no, that would be too much. All right, that would be too much. So you see, the true forgiveness is hard sometimes to extend because it demands that people let go of something we value. Maybe not a piece of jewelry, but in some case pride or a sense of justice or a desire for revenge. We see in one case it worked. You let go of the rope and eventually uh, God will help us get over that completely. Whereas this lady, even though at the end of her life, and she wanted to, but she just couldn't, couldn't leave it. So true forgiveness. Uh, that's why I appreciate the verse. That said, to forgive one another as God, as Christ, has forgiven us. You wonder maybe why I'm preaching about forgiveness here today. Well, even if you don't need to use this today, or maybe in the next day or next week, I think this is a very important principle in a Christian life to have uh, forgiveness. Jesus forgave us. Not all, you know, some of us were deeper in sin than others, but regardless, we were all separated from God. We all needed forgiveness and the hope of heaven, and God did for that willingly, uh, and we thank God for that. So if God forgives us, we need to forgive others. Uh, and sometimes even before we forgive others, we need to forgive ourselves. Uh, Romans 8.1 tells us that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who act not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Once God forgives us, we stand completely forgiven before him. We can forgive ourselves. We can forgive uh, some of these things, and, and God will make, uh, uh, make us uh, and help us in that. It's like somebody wrote an illustration. It's like whiteout. Any of you guys still use whiteout? Probably nobody. Well, very few people. <laughs> very few people use whiteout. I know... Mirella, sometimes when she used to write in the past, she always, I said, you know, she always used to use the white out and then write over it, right? When you, when you white it out, you can't see what's written under, and now you can write over it, right? Uh, you know, you can write. Over. So when God forgives us, it's like that white out. We can, we can, there's nothing to look at. We can write over a new story, a new thing that God is doing in our lives, and we thank God for that. We, or we can be this, depending on the offen, uh, offense, uh, offense involved, it's like the story of the two little boys, Johnny and his friend. Uh, they had a fight. They quarreled. But the next morning, Johnny was ready, took his cap, and was ready uh, to go out to Bobby's house again. And surprised about that, an older member of the family said teasingly to him, What? You going to play with him again? I thought you quarreled only last evening, and we're never going to have anything to do with him anymore. You have funny memory. Uh, and Johnny thought for a while, he was a young little boy, uh, looked sheepish and uh, thought for a moment and then smiled satisfactorily and said, oh, Bobby and I are good forgetters. Maybe that's required sometimes for us to be forgetters. Unlike this, and you know, uh, forgiveness is also important. Not only, we talked about family. There's a lot of things in family stories, but the story about a couple married for 15 years, uh, and they had a lot, having more than usual disagreements. They wanted to make their marriage work and agreed on an idea the wife had. As you'll learn later on, probably was the wrong exercise, but I, I'll tell you the story. For one month, they planned to drop a slip in a fault box. The boxes would provide a place to let the other know about their daily irritations. The wife was diligent in her efforts and approach. Quote, unquote, leaving the jelly top off the jar, wet towels on the shower floor, 
dirty socks not in the hamper. On and on it went until the end of the month. After dinner, at the end of the month, they exchanged boxes. The husband reflected on what he had done wrong as he listened to what the wife kept saying. Then the wife opened her box and began reading. They were all the same. The message on each slip was, I love you. As I mentioned, uh, yeah, maybe that's the wrong type of exercise to do in a marriage. Maybe what they should have had is uh, the things I like about each other rather than what's wrong with each other. But anyway, it's just like Martha and Mary, it looks like there was something for the men to do, right? There was a lot of things, and that's how you work in marriage, as we heard in Sunday school. There are some things for each one of us to work in, but no doubt he also needed to come up on those things. So forgiveness is applicable in many areas of life, and we have a lot of uh, things. You know, the Bible is full of forgiveness and example that we have, a model that we can all see or experience, the model of God forgiving us, God changed our life. We, that's a personal experience that nobody can take away from us, and, uh, and we can apply it in our lives, and we'll be better for it in the end, uh, and we thank God for that. It says, forbearing uh, and being kind one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So what happens if we don't forgive? All right? What happens if we don't forgive? Well, yes. Thank you for saying that. There's, there's some conditional forgiveness. Now, God, uh, when we come to him uh, as a sinner and we come before him and ask him for his, his forgiveness, God forgives us because of the price that Jesus paid for us. But as Christians, as we you read about Paul and Barnabas, sometimes there are disagreements. Sometimes there are things we say that maybe we say, oh, I shouldn't have said it that way. So there's forgiveness that needs to be uh, experienced even as Christians. So we need to forgive one another when things happen. Uh, a person might not even know. In one of verse, it says that when you come before the Lord in prayer and you remember uh, that either you have something against your brother or your brother has something against you, make that right first. Now, how often should we forgive one another? Uh, you know, and does forgiveness happen only if the person repents? and says, I'm sorry, or apologizes. In one place in the Bible, there's a verse that says, do that. Uh, let's say your brother comes to you, he trespasses against you, and if you, if you repent, forgive him. If he trespasses seven times in a day, and comes back to you seven times in a day, and asks, forgive him, uh, then, and says, I repent, forgive him. Uh, and the, the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith because we need, we need help with that. But then, as I mentioned, uh, when you, uh, another verse that says, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that thy brother has ought against thee. In other words, the brother hasn't even asked for your forgiveness. He wasn't even in the picture, but God reminded you of something that could be in the way. He says, leave the, the gift before the altar and go first and be reconciled. So there's no one formula for forgiveness. And we thank God that uh, he gives us the wisdom uh, that we need and God leads us as we uh, uh, desire that, but we, we do want to have that desire to forgive one another. We don't want to keep a grudge because it can fester, it becomes worse. Now, some people have, uh, like Cain, you know, not like I'm a Christian here, but sometimes uh, that uh, it boils quickly, right? And it can be a big problem. Or some can let those wrong things simmer for a long time, and it builds bitterness over time, and it can create a toxic uh, inside, and that's just as bad too, right? But we thank God that we can, because he forgave us, we can forgive others by his grace and by his help. We thank God for all he's done for us. Not only is forgiveness good for the soul, but also good for our physical health. I read somewhere, and I wrote it down here, that uh, uh, a unforgiveness causes an increase in stress, increases blood pressure, negatively affects the immune system. There's a high level of cortisol, which is a, a stress hormone there, which that high level of cortisol affects our GI system, our immune system, even affects our memory and our cognitive performance, our ability to fight illness. So uh, keeping onto grudges and to unforgiveness 
it not only affects spiritually our relationship with God and, and with man, but also affects us personally, emotionally, and mentally. So how wonderful it is that we as Christian have this precious gift that God has given us, the gift, the ability to forgive one, one another. Why? Because God forgave us first. We have a great master, a great teacher, a great model that we pray that God will help us to do just that in our daily life. Uh, we thank God for what he's done for us. So all these examples in his words from the story of Joseph to the story of, of Paul and, uh, and Barnabas and all those in between of the beauty of forgiveness and how it gives a wonderful uh, freedom. As we mentioned, it frees us uh, to live for God and to enjoy life to the fullest. So may God help each one of us in our daily life as we continue to follow him. We'll have a song of... Um, invitation here at the end let's come before the lord and if there's any work that needs to happen on that on this aspect may god help each one of us to follow through with god's help and god will bless us when we do that song number 617 let's